What is going on, guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo back with Far Cry 3 on the daily so we can get this game wrapped up. I tried to record this video with live commentary and it had a severe audio issue that sounded like this throughout the entire video. Yes, as you can see, that would be completely displeasing to the eardrum of any fine fellow or female. So I decided to re record this commentary. I know that most of you dislike. The videos where there's no commentary, and I dislike them equally. So, um, basically, it's very hard to deal with these problems. They frustrate me immensely. I don't know why I'm plagued by so many strange audio issues. I, I mainly blame my setup. I haven't liked my setup for like a year. And even when I moved to California, I did not really... I was hoping it would be able to be organized better and be able to be more office-like. And I had to just put it in a bedroom, which I thought would be okay, but it really actually became quite tricky. Um, it became quite tricky, so I, I think I might move again, and I just have to get my stuff on lockdown. But you don't care about that as much as you care about what's happening in this video. Right now, we are on our way to alert our friends of our insanity and madness, and I decided to get back here uh, at Almanaki Village to uh, kind of re-up on some different things, buy some new equipment, sell off some useless junk, and refill my ammunitions. Um, you'll see in a second I end up going through and buying a, a battle, whatever, body armor pack. Um, and then I end up equipping the MP5 and switching out the MP5, uh, or switching in the MP5 for the extra sniper rifle I picked up last mission. Um, this is a, a kind of a strange series of episodes here because it, it's really story-based and, and really... I think this is potentially the strongest portion of the story so far, you know. As crazy as it is that Jason has become a complete psychopath, there's at least a, a, a real strong threat I feel to hold on to. And they do a nice job of mixing it in with Voss and the crazy insanity-ness and Citra. And soon you'll see how his friends and girlfriend all react to Jason's madness. And, and on one hand, it doesn't make any sense that Jason has completely transformed himself into a crazy person. But on the other hand, you know, it. I think you would be vastly different if you... One, where we're struck by so much grief of your sibling's death, and then right after that, you deal with, like, you becoming a mass murderer and having to handle that emotionally. It would, it would really mess you up. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going through, and I, I haven't ever used an LMG, but I feel like the assault rifles are probably a stronger choice. So I will end up sticking with those and mixing this stuff all up and around. Um, and, again, like I mentioned yesterday, I'm really going to try to get these videos at a consistent time. Uh, until the game is done, I do want to wrap it up. I am excited to see how it concludes. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I record? Do I beat the game and then upload, you know, just slowly or what? And, and typically, I'm playing multiple games, and so I'm uploading as I'm playing. So, like, you know, maybe I'll record an hour and then upload those four videos for the day, or maybe I'll record 20 minutes and just upload that one video or, or something, but... I never, at least in my history of Ghost Robo, I've never really back recorded. I know that there's some channels that, that do that. They play a game for six hours straight, and then they sort of have those episodes for that week or for that time period or whatever they're going to use them for. I've never been like that, and um, the way I, I kind of operate my recordings is that I upload them basically as soon as I'm done with them. Sure, there's the occasional time I'll record two or three in a row, and then I can you know, at least have a little bit saved in the bank uh, in terms of video cache, but normally I'm kind of... I don't know, I've always been a uh, more seat-of-your-pants type person, so when I record, I'm recording for that moment specifically. We're here at Dr. Earnhardt's Mansion, who in some ways I think might be the culprit of all this, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was a twist where he ended up working with Vaz, because Jason's drug-infused uh, journey kind of began with this doctor, and I feel like everything took a severe turn for the worse after his interactions with the old kook, but we'll see how his friends react to Jason's plan to defeat Hoyt and uh, make himself Citra's little puppy dog.
And all of our friends hate us. Jason has basically become an uh, emotionless jerk. Uh, I I think that's pretty callous. I don't know that he, she must not have very meant, meant that much to him, or maybe he's just a complete tool. Because uh, that was pretty freaking rude, and I still don't understand how they're going to get the boat out of that cave, to be honest, unless they're going to carry it, you know, Roman uh, god style on their shoulders on wooden planks and then throw it in the ocean. But nonetheless, Jason has basically made himself into the biggest jerk of 2012 by betraying his friends that I guess he saved. And for all the, the roughness of it, he didn't seem to shed a tear or, or show any remorse whatsoever. Uh, maybe it was a cold break because he had to do what he had to do. But he doesn't really have to do what he has to do. He could easily get off the island as intended with these people. But he's a power-hungry young man who feels obligated to, I don't know, push his own ego and testosterone forward to the brinks of craziness. Um, I do think this is kind of the, the strongest moment for the game uh, story-wise. Yet, I'm the most interested to see what happens story-beat-wise. Uh, and we have to go talk to Willis, who... I assume to be back in his bunker, but apparently he's sick and tired of that. Let's find out what he's doing, where he has been, and what he's up to next. Boom, we accomplished the shortest mission of the game, Fly South, talking to Hoyt. Uh, or at least we start that mission. I never know if those are indicating both the start and the finish, or just the finish. I think in this case it was the start, and then we'll get a finishing one later. But this is a very awesome portion. A mad dash escape out of the village. We are putting on our best temple run face and making our way through the crazy ruins and jungle trees. And I believe there's a Bengal tiger coming up uh, once we uh, get across the water here. We left it avoid him in the near future. Um, or maybe we just passed him, I don't know. Again, I'm recording this post because as you heard earlier in the video, that noise was terrifying and it, of course, then blanked out all my talking ability. Um, all you heard was for 15 minutes, which would really bore a hole into my brain if I had to listen to it. Didn't want to put you through that. Um, we've come upon the uh, circle of life here. We're going to run into some tapirs you just saw back there. Uh, we have these crazy birds who did try to kill me a couple episodes back, if you remember. I was attacked and, and grotesquely murdered by a, a beak-pecking, virulent creature. There's some wild dogs down in this canyon. And uh, basically, our escape takes us through a whole circus of animals guarding... I don't know, guarding the Willis' plane. I don't know where he's going to fly off from. It seems kind of silly because there's no runways unless he's... Can the helicopter it out of here? He made some secret runway we don't know about. It reminds me so much of Lost. You just like come upon these places. You're like, what? I didn't know this was here. And it almost made me like, in some ways, like the, the, the encounters aren't as grand as you'd think. They just seem more grand because it's on this island and you don't expect them. Uh, I mean, granted, in the case of Lost, things were pretty extreme. But in the case of this island, they're, they're pretty mundane things, but they just seem like, whoa, because it's on an island. And that's one of the benefits of that setting. Of course, there are thousands of pirates trying to stop us from leaving. They want to protect their main man, Hoyt. So, we're going to go in and save Willis. Um, this is definitely the trickiest combat situation I've encountered in the game yet. There are so many attacking dudes coming from multiple angles, and you run out of ammo really fast. And it's probably my fault for wanting to experiment with this MP5. I really like the submachine gun. Uh, you know, picked up that red dot sight. It's got really fast rate of fire, really cool gun. It, it's pretty reckless at distance. Uh, and it runs out of ammo quickly, so I probably should not have used it, but it was fun um, to try out for a bit. And these guys, again, they all they all, they all all shop at the same shirt company. Very strange. Voss and Hoyt must have ordered them team uniforms by the thousands. Here is Willis's awesome plane, and now he has to repair it. He's got that, he got that magic blue pixel can spraying those blue pixels on the <laughs> plane to fix it. Oh, boy. Willis, Willis, Willis. Nice hair. All right, so this is a repair in progress, a uh, lovely defend mission. And these guys are just coming out of the woodwork, coming out of the jungle. 
from every which way to take us down. And I have to cover helpless Sap Willis as he sprays blue pixels on our escape plane. Um, I switched to the uh, assault rifle here just because I was having a heck of a time, like I said, at distance with the other gun. Um, but, man, reloading, I feel I just upgraded reloading, but it's still so slow. You know, this many guys rushing at you, it becomes really tricky. And, and soon you'll see they start to come from all angles. And, again, like I said, I feel like this is the toughest combat encounter of the entire game so far. Uh, and we're nearing the end, so this very well could be, for me, the most difficult combat situation of the entirety of Far Cry 3. Um, they're going to throw in some big bad boys soon. I think right about... Eh, one more wave. Uh, there will be some, some heavy gunners. Um, and then they introduce trucks and cars. And it's just... Goodness gracious sakes, a lot. there's a lot of guys. It's, it's very, very tricky to keep up with. Um, I do I do like, though, how they do a nice job of mixing up heavy gunplay you know, segments with heavy exploration bits, with driving and travel. There's Hoy just doing his thing with the sunglasses on. No care in the world of the bullets flying. He should probably go the other side of the plane. I don't think anyone's attacked from that angle yet. But uh, there's our big bad man. Uh, it is a good healthy balance. Like, if, if it was this 24-7, the game would be nowhere near as good as it is. Um, the fact that this is, like, a, a notable battle is because they don't put battles throughout. Sure, you can shoot one or two guys every once in a while, but they're limited engagements. Uh, you rarely have a full brouhaha like this. Like, it's not like Bowser sends out his minions and attacks you every five seconds. It's only at crucial junctures in the storyline. So, as we slowly repair this plane, our meter is 60-70% full. I thought we were safe. I thought we were home free. But no, all of a sudden you'll see that the trucks are going to come and you know, things get really mad. I have to start using health packs. And I was just about freaking out because, uh, you know, they do a really good job modeling um, sort of taking a bullet. So you, you completely can't aim for a little bit after you get shot. I've got heavies coming. I've got these guys coming. I've got guys on guns. I've got truck dudes. Uh, I'm lucky that I take them both out, but... In a little bit here, it's going to get so overwhelming. Uh, and then you have to defend Willis. It's I hate that. I hate that in first-person shooters when you're too close to an object or a texture and you, your bullets get caught on the wrap of it, even though it shouldn't. Like, clearly there's a, a boundary on the object that isn't letting bullets affect it, so they just look like they're hitting a wall. But I, I was effectively shooting those dudes. Should not have hit the plane like I did. We're getting close to evacuation zone. Willis doing his job. I was going to get on this gun here. Um, but I felt like, hey, I should stay on foot and be more mobile as we just get bombarded by wave after wave. What is this? Gears of War horde mode? Come on now. And everybody's wearing the same dang shirt. But we will take them out. Uh, ammo is spare, so I do need to pick up my packs. And again, this is where it starts going all craziness. Guys are coming from all three angles. There's another heavy. Um, and it's just going to become madness. I'm out of ammo. I'm down to a sniper rifle. This is bad news. Bad news. No health packs. Ah, oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I'm going to try to snipe, again, two heavies there, a heavy on my side, and a couple individual dudes, and I lose because Willis dies. So that is going to wrap up this video. I will, uh, I'll finish out that battle next time. Hope you enjoyed. Again, these videos will be coming around this time every single day. At least one of them so we can get this game done because it's fun. Hopefully there won't be that annoying, crazy buzzing sound next time. And I can make it live, but I didn't want to stick with you guys the whole video on this one. I know that means a lot to you, and so, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic day. Drink some hot chocolate. Till next time, guys and girls, we'll see you all later.